If you want to make more money and you want to turn your annual income into your monthly income without working yourself to death, then there's three things that you have to understand. When the majority of people are thinking about earning more money, the one factor that they typically look at is the financial side. What is something that I can do that will make me more money and how can I scale this one thing? And this is why the majority of people struggle making more money because they don't understand the three aspects to making money and then see how you can scale those three things. Because the second thing that you have to pay attention attention to besides just the financial is the legal aspect. And the third factor is the moral aspect. And then in this tiny area, this is where you create the most opportunity. And now the question is, how can you scale the opportunity right here? Financially, you can go out and start selling drugs on the street. Maybe ethically and morally, you don't care. You might think it's fine, but legally, that's not gonna work. When I was in college, I started an event planning company. I kind of started it before I was in college, but it really started to take off when I was in college. And in this company, the biggest thing that we did was hosting club parties. Now, the money was was good. And yeah, it was kind of legal, kind of not legal. I was an underage kid hosting club parties. I'm sure there's some legal issues there. But financially, I was making good money. The problem was I didn't like the industry. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I'm not into partying. For me, it was a hustle. It was a way to make money because I didn't know anything else. I was working with a lot of DJs and it was a way for me to start making money and it was what I knew. But as I started to grow, we started to make good money. And as a college kid, when you're making about six figures a year, it's a ton of money. And I could have scaled this into something a whole lot bigger. But the problem was was this moral aspect. I hated the industry that I was in. So I took this company where I was making great money and then I shut it down because I didn't like what I was doing. It didn't sit well with me. And after a couple of years of doing it, well, I stopped caring. I didn't want to keep doing it, so I shut it down. So I had the financial aspect and yeah, I was on the borderline legal and not legal stuff, but financially it was good, legally I assume it was good, but morally it didn't work for me, so I could never scale it into something that it could have been. Now just because something is legal and just because something is moral doesn't mean that you're gonna be able to make any money from it. You have to make sure that you can actually scale this income. Like I could go out and start a bedtime reading service where every night I come to your house and I'm gonna read you a bedtime story to help you fall asleep. That's legal, it's moral, but I'm probably not gonna make any money. The only person that's gonna buy this is probably gonna be my broke cousin Bunty. So you have to understand now, how do these three aspects play together? For a little bit of time, more than a decade ago, I was selling things on Amazon and eBay. And this is before Amazon FBA was cool. This is before it was super popularized to sell things on the internet. But I had this idea with my friend to sell things on Amazon and eBay where we bought products from China and then we sold it on Amazon and eBay. And this is before it was all over the internet on how to do this. And we started making good money. Yeah, it was legal and yes, it was moral. We were making a little bit of money, but the problem was it wasn't scalable because what I started thinking at that time more than 10 years ago was, well, we're buying things and selling them, but they're not ours. We're selling somebody else's stuff. And what's stopping somebody else from undercutting us? And then we had the issue of, well, what happens if we're selling products and then the person who's selling us the products stops selling them to us? Then our business shuts down. And then we had the issue of, oh my God, what if the manufacturer who's selling us products is lying to us and they're not authentic products? That was an issue that we ran into, which is one of the reasons why we ended up shutting down the business. But what I saw was, yeah, it was legal. Yeah, it was moral. And yeah, we we're making a little bit of money, but the scaling part of the business was not there. We didn't have any real product. We didn't have any IP. We didn't have anything that we could scale because we were so reliant on everybody else, but we had no way to secure our own financial future with it because if anybody shut us down, if Amazon shut us down, or if our manufacturer shut us down, well, now we're done. And if we were to gain any sort of market share, well, then the bigger players would want to come in and they'd want to take our spot and undercut us and we'd have nothing that we could do. So yeah, it was legal, it was moral, but we had no financial scalability. So if I really wanted to make a lot of money, it would be extremely difficult, nearly impossible to do that because I own nothing and I control nothing. The moral side of earning more money is the most personal. I don't smoke, I don't drink, and I had a lot a lot of opportunities to get into the weed business as soon as it started getting legalized in my state. But I didn't do it. Yeah, it was financially great. It was legal, 
but morally, it didn't sit right with me because I don't smoke. Now, if you smoke, that's fine, but I don't, and I don't want to promote smoking. I don't want to promote drinking. I don't want to promote that type of thing, so morally, it didn't sit right with me, although I could make a ton of money. The people that were pitching these weed businesses to me years ago when it first became legal are making millions of dollars now, but I chose not to do it, not because of this or this, but because of this. Now, when you find that hybrid right here, when you find this opportunity right here, now the question is, how do you scale it? That way you can earn even more money without it relying on you. And the key thing here is value. How much value can you provide? Because when the value that you provide exceeds the cost of whatever it is that you're selling, well, you're gonna have a much easier time selling this product to make that money. If you can provide more value, you will be able to make more money. And this is one of those things that gets thrown around all the time. Just provide more value, provide more value. The reason why doctors make more money than cashiers is because doctors provide more value. But when it comes to actually implementing it, that's where it gets hard. How do you actually provide more value with whatever it is that you're doing? And this is now where you have to be creative. You generally have two different extremes when it comes to value. You have the value of luxury, and then you have the value of cheap. And you have to decide where on the spectrum that you want to be because in the middle, well, there's not that much value. The value is on the extremes. I have a lot of family in a state in India called Punjab. And when I go to India, well, growing up, I would always look for the cheapest tickets. How do you get to India as cheap as possible? And so you'd always look for the airlines that are offering the cheapest and most affordable discount tickets to get to India. That's the discount side, the cheap side. Well, on the alternative, now when I go to India, I'm not looking for the cheapest tickets. I'm looking for tickets that are going to provide me with more value. I want a seat that's going to be able to lay down. I want a pod. I want to have the space that way I can sit comfortably. This is going to cost me five, six times more than what a cheap ticket would cost me, but I'm not looking for the discounted price. I'm looking for the value. You have very few people that are saying, you know what, I want an average ticket. I want to look for the average flight that where I pay more than what the cheapest would cost, but I don't want to pay for the highest stuff. I want something completely average. Most people are either saying, I want the discount ticket or I want the nice seat. Now the question is now, how do you do that? And we cover these types of things in business briefs, which is my free business newsletter where every day my team is breaking down what's happening in terms of business trends and innovation and funding. That way you can stay up to date as an entrepreneur of what's happening in the business world. That way you can make smarter decisions in your business. So if you have a business, if you are an entrepreneur, I highly recommend you join business briefs because there's so much information packed into these emails and because it's completely free. So if you haven't joined business briefs yet, I'll put the link to how you can join business briefs down in the description. But, no. but in order to provide this type of value, you have to make sure that your target customer is aligning with who your product is for. Because if now you realize, I want to be the discount person, I want to offer the cheapest stuff possible, you got to make sure your marketing is not aligned with that and your customers are in alignment with that. You have to tailor your marketing towards one person because if you say, well, anybody could buy my stuff and you're the middle of the range product where, yeah, you're kind of the affordable person, but you're not the best person and anybody can have it. Well, the bargain hunters, the people that want the cheap stuff are not going to want your product because you're more expensive than the cheap people and the people that want the nice stuff, people that want the nice customers service, the people that want the most value, they're not going to want your stuff because you're kind of the middle of the range person and now you're left with the scraps. So if you want to be able to provide more value to more people, you got to first identify what value that you can provide. Are you providing the most customer service, the most value, the most luxury, the most quality, the best service ever? Or are you providing an affordable product? If it's neither of these, what is that specific piece of value. The more specific you can get here, the better. How can you provide the most value to your readers, to your customers, to your buyers? That way you can now take care of them. One of the things that we do at Market Briefs and Business Briefs, which is Briefs Media, my media company, is we created a system where now we want to provide the best customer service possible when it comes to our newsletter. Now you might be thinking, customer service for a newsletter, what are you talking about? Well, one of the things that we do is we have a system where when people respond to our emails, we like to respond back. We have a customer service team that sits there to respond to our emails because we want to provide an additional value to our readers that nobody else does. Because when most people read a newsletter, you would expect and assume that someone's sending an email to you, you read it, and then if you respond, it goes into this black hole. We wanted to change that. So now when people respond to our emails, you get a response back. So ask yourself this question, what value can you provide that nobody else is providing? Once you can solve that question, and you can put it within here, now the question is how can you scale it? 
How can you get more customers? And this is all about marketing now. It's just about exposure because once you have the value product, once you have the real way where you can differentiate yourself from everybody else, now it's all about getting people to hear about it and getting people to actually use a product. And now this can be now your paid advertising, your organic marketing, your sponsorships, whatever it might be. But now it's all about how do you craft the message so the right person will hear your product and have to have it. Because when a bargain hunter is looking for a cheap flight and you talk about how you have the cheapest flights out there, they know that they need your product. When you're offering the best service possible, the most customer service, the best quality possible, the quality hunters will know that they have to have your product. And this is where you have to be able to differentiate and define this value that with the people who want your product will immediately identify with it. Because if you're ambiguous with it, where I have a good product, well, good products don't really do anything for anybody. Either you got to have the best product or the cheapest product if you want to be able to provide the most value. If it's not that, it's the best customer service. If it's not that, then it's the best experience. And if it's not that, then what is it? What is your key piece of value that will differentiate you, your company, your product, your service from everything else? And once you know that, that's your pitch to get your right customer to hear you because once they hear this pitch, they will immediately realize that this is the product that I need. I went through law school and I went through all this schooling to learn how to become successful, but never once did I learn about money. I never learned about how to manage my money. I never learned about how to invest my money. And I never learned how to build wealth in the economic system that we have right now. The first bit of financial education that every single person needs to understand, especially if you live in America, 